Talk us through the transition into government in um, or post March 2017. How, how difficult was that transition, or how challenging was that transition? It's obviously a transition you guys all mm. you know, were hoping for, um, but I just wonder how many curveballs there were, or how, how it sort of. It's out. funny, and I was president of the party at the time through the campaign, so I was on the campaign committee and doing assisting with all sorts of different things, fundraising, all the usual things that you do, and help get around the various groups and be helpful. Um, but I, I, first off, I'd say time in opposition was never badly spent, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I felt sorry for for those people that from the the government that came in whilst they were winning government in government and had to take a front bench position. Dean Nolder and Sean Strange. And I'm not saying they're not reflecting on their capacity, but they didn't have the privilege that I had to sit back, all care, no responsibility, and just learn your game. They had to come straight off the street, straight to the, well, virtually straight to the front bench and perform. And it's a hell of an ask, a hell of an ask. And I think it's, it was a disadvantage for them. Um, I mean, they, they did what they did their job and it wasn't saying that. So the time in opposition was a privilege. Um, what really struck me about opposition was everybody wanted to help. I could read a story in the paper, Professor so-and-so has been found this out about this, and you could ring him up and you could say, hey, I'm really interested in what you're, you take a minute, you get them, you find them somehow. CEOs, everybody, and then say, oh, I find your comments interesting, can you have a chat? They're more than willing to have a chat and help you out. And then what you realise is you can get an armchair right here. There's people that look at all aspects of public life or, or social, economic policy, for example. They've spent 30 years looking at it. So why wouldn't you? So opposition gives that opportunity. You're sent to the opposition benches to reinvent your game, not to have a rest. And so that was good. But so. But then getting to the other side, beginning to government was, was just the unstated aim. It was, it was just the thing that was present all the time. And you didn't realise, and the reason I'm saying that is because as we went through the campaign, I was sitting in the campaign and doing the research, get all that research, you're going well, tracking this way, tracking these are the issues, this, you know, and we'd work out the, the, the tactics to achieve that, that strategy. And, and then we realised that about oh, three, four weeks out, oh, a period of time out, we're going to win this thing. And there was this dawning, you know, moment when, I'm going to use this language now because this is what it was real, was, oh, shit, we're going to actually win this thing. And nobody would actually say that, but we all like looked at each other and went, okay, so this is all real. And so uh, then the night comes and, the, and like we're standing in the, in the various places where you have the after parties and, and your counts and all that. And I was with Fran Logan and, and Simone McGurk and, and you know, we had a sort of a joint meeting and, just watching the TVs and seat after seat after seat, you know, Kingsley and Kalamunda and Blizzard, just blown away, but the, 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 the scale of the, the win. And then it just, it dawned on you and then bang, it just, straight after that, you know, the caucus meetings and, you know, ministries. No rest, no rest. Yep.